I love introducing people to the whales, dolphins, and porpoises that are in their own backyard of San Francisco Bay. These marine mammals really do give us a window into the health of our ocean, and they're incredibly adaptable if we give them a chance. The passion that flows from Bill Keener's voice when he talks about marine life is evident. His journey with the Marine Mammal Center began as an animal care volunteer in the 1970s and included a stint as executive director in the early 80s. He served as a naturalist, worked at the EPA, and as a co-founder for a nonprofit research group that later merged with the center. Today, he serves as a field researcher with the center's cetacean conservation biology team and is widely recognized as one of the preeminent experts on whales, dolphins, and porpoises. I joined him on a classic, cool summer day in the Bay Area, scanning the California coast with his trusty binoculars, looking for familiar spouts of gray or humpback whales. So Bill, tell me what we're looking at right now. All right, we're at uh, Muscle Rock, which is right on the border between Daly City and the town of Pacifica. And the ocean today is uh, pretty calm. We've got this marine layer, fog layer that's above us. Um, but we're looking out and we can see a, at least two humpback whales that are uh, offshore a little ways. And one of them looks like they were just lunge feeding. Their health is our health. That's a line that's always stuck with me, and it inspired me to start volunteering here 20 years ago, something that I do to this day. I'm John Carlo Rulli at the Marine Mammal Center, and this is Sentinels of the Sea, a show about what we've learned from 50 years as a critical first responder to seals, sea lions, whales, and other marine mammals. Keener says the frequency of large whales and other marine life now exploring the bay is quite the phenomenon. There were occasional ventures of a humpback whale like Humphrey in the 1980s, or the mother-calf pairing of Delta and Dawn in 2007. Harbor porpoises were absent from bay waters for 65 years. Fast forward to today, it's all changed. It's what makes the land and boat bay surveys we're doing critically important. In my lifetime, I've really seen positive changes for the bay. And that's why the scientific data that we're collecting is so important, not just for conservation decisions and for the public, but also for the next generation of marine mammal scientists. Why are they here? Why are certain individuals coming back and others not? And how can we keep them safe in an urban setting like San Francisco Bay? These are questions we're actively working on. Simply put, large marine mammals like whales face major risks and many environmental stressors. For example, the North Pacific gray whale recently lost more than 45% of its population, an estimated 10,000 plus individuals in just a four year span. A now closed federal emergency declaration was announced back in 2019. Dozens of dead whales washed ashore here in the Bay Area. Well, a troubling sign on Bay Area beaches. Another whale washing ashore, this time in Pacifica on Lindemar Beach. In the past four months, a dozen dead whales have washed up on Bay Area shores. Climate change was at the center of it all. Increasing temperatures impacted food source availability due to sea ice loss in the Arctic. It led to malnutrition. Vessel strikes, entanglement in fishery gear, and orca predation also impacted the whales. This event, among others, is why we're taking active steps on the local level to make the bay and ocean waters safer. We understand that commerce is here to stay, but so are the whales. To protect them, we have to act, and anyone can. Goods transit from port to port and across the ocean via large ships. We all know that. It's what I share with my family back in the Midwest. But our increasing consumer demand and desire for the quickest delivery possible adds to the complexity of the ship strike issue. With that in mind, we need to think critically about our consumer choices and our purchasing power, as they can have real consequences for marine wildlife. That's Kathy George, Director of Cetacean Conservation Biology at the Center. She oversees the research team. She also serves as a lead for whale entanglement response and on several state and federal advisory councils dedicated to protecting whales. She believes strongly that bringing everyone to the table is the right path forward. 
She's reiterated this message from local committee meetings to national maritime conferences. That includes the general public. I'm really excited about the work that's being done to better understand and protect these whales. I believe when we do good science, collaborate with industry, government agencies, and harbor safety committees, we can build trust and relationships where we share knowledge and build lasting solutions. These solutions and models can be applied anywhere in the country. Many colleagues I work with here at the center will often reiterate that science is the pursuit of knowledge. I believe that to be the case. Our marine mammal patients that we care for and study help teach us about the problems they're facing, but it's up to us to take the next step in preventing those problems in the first place. We want to challenge people to think critically about these problems and how they can create change through their behavior and choices. Back on a high sloping hill overlooking the California coast, Bill Keener puts down the binoculars to give his eyes a rest. It's been an eventful morning with multiple sightings and now time to head back to the office to record the day's work. I believe the destinies of marine mammals and humans are linked and when they thrive, we thrive. To learn more about the center's cetacean research and conservation efforts, visit our website, marinemammalcenter.org. I'm John Carlo Rulli. Thanks for listening.